Nelson Kodak Company is happy to bring you America's favorite family, the Nelsons. Ozzy, Harriet, David, and Ricky. They enjoy good times together, and like most of us, they know that good times are snapshot times. Outdoors and indoors, too. Like the Nelsons, you too can save those heartwarming scenes that happen only indoors. Flash pictures are easy to take, priceless to keep. And this new flash holder makes them even easier. It's the new Kodak rotary flash holder. It holds six bulbs at a time, so you can take six flash pictures in a row without stopping to put in new bulbs. For extra convenience, you can buy low-cost flash bulbs in this special six-pack. The new Kodak rotary flash holder comes in two models to fit nearly all cameras. This model costs $10.95. See it at your photo dealers. Another new reward in pictures by Kodak. And now Kodak invites you to enjoy The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. There you are, Dr. Williams. One triple banana surprise. Thanks, Joe. Hey, you forgot something. I did. One red cherry, cream de menthe cherries, uh, hazelnuts, walnuts, whipped cream, sliced pineapple, butterscotch syrup, marshmallow syrup, a scoop of chocolate, a scoop of vanilla, a scoop of pistachio nut, a scoop of uh, coffee ripple, and lime sherbet. Uh, this is two bananas and six macaroons. What'd I forget? A spoon. <laughs> I'm right up there. Oh, hiya, Doc. Oh, hi, Oz. Oh, no. What's the matter? Uh, would you mind waiting till I get out of the store before you eat that concoction? What's wrong with it? <laughs> Nothing's wrong with it. They're delicious. Share for one, Mr. Nelson? No, oh, uh, no, thanks. After last night, I'm swearing off. Uh, <laughs> just give me a quart of chocolate ice cream. Uh, don't forget the spoon. <laughs> no, I'm not going to eat it here. You're not. Boy, you really are on the wagon. <laughs> Say, you want to go bowling tonight? Oh, no, thanks. I, I'm exhausted. I got about three hours sleep last night. That's about what I got. Mrs. Bellinger had a boy at three o'clock this morning. What's your excuse? Well, it was nothing like that. It was just... It's kind of hard to explain. At first, I thought it was all a dream, and then I was convinced it wasn't. And... And now I just don't know. Well, lie down on the stool and tell me all about it. <laughs> See, uh, actually, the, the whole thing started with one of those darn things. Uh, Harriet and I went to a movie last night and came in here afterward. Oh, it must have been about, oh, say, 11.15, uh, 11.30, uh, something like that. I just don't see how you can eat those things. <laughs> if you want one of these, order it for yourself. Don't be stealing mine. Well, I just took one. The cherries are two more left there. Yeah, but these are cream de menthe. You stole my last red cherry. I was saving that for a big finish. <laughs> Besides that, you took most of my whipped cream before. I was just trying to find out what it is that keeps you awake. Keeps me awake? You gonna sit there and claim you don't stay awake most of the night after you eat one of those? Oh, well, no, I, I don't stay awake. I, I may dream a little. I think they usually call them nightmares. No, don't be silly. Besides, these are good. Well, okay, but don't wake me up in the middle of the night and tell me that your spaceship ran out of fuel. Spaceship? Yeah. That trip you took to the moon last Tuesday night must have been pretty exciting. Uh, now, you see, you don't listen when I describe my nightmares to you. I wasn't on a spaceship. I was the first human-guided missile. <laughs> Besides, uh, I'd get hungry if I didn't eat something before I went to bed. I'd have worse nightmares. Okay, suit yourself. Uh, Joe, uh, could you get me another of these double banana torpedoes, please? <laughs>
plenty time for lots of loving. Though there's no island at all, just a picture on my wall. My darling, how I wish we could be in the middle of an island, in the middle of the ocean. You and I forever, darling, in a paradise for two. In a paradise for two. In the middle of the night with you. Ta wa ta wa wa la. It ain't a lot of do 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 la. Do 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 la. It do do la. Hala de ko it ba la. You and Helen wait right there, and I'll be out as soon as I can. Okay, I'll call him. All right, I'll see you in a few minutes. Bye. What's the matter? Well, Dave can't get his car started. They stopped off at Harry's Diner, and they're stuck out there. I'm going out to get them. Well, it's quite a drive, isn't it, all the way out there? Well, it won't take too long. Oh, uh, Dave asked me to call up Helen's father. Do you know their number? It's in the little book right there on the table. Gee, do you think you ought to call him up at this hour? It's awful late. Well, I told Dave I would. Hello, Mr. Bishop. Uh, my name is Nelson. Uh, my son Dave is out with your daughter tonight, and he just phoned me. His car broke down, and they're out at a place called Harry's Diner, and uh, I'm going to drive out there and pick him up. Uh, I just didn't want you to be worried. Oh. Oh, really? Well, uh, yes, uh, that'd be fine if you would. Oh, well, uh, thanks a lot. Hey, uh, there's a, a lucky break. Uh, Mr. Bishop just got home from a lodge meeting, and he said he'd go out and pick Dave and Helen up. Oh, that is lucky. Oh, hi. You still up? <laughs> How did you get back so soon? I just talked to you on the phone. Oh, you didn't talk to me, Pop. Well, you just phoned me from Harry's Diner. I've never even heard of Harry's Diner. The, the Harriet, the, the phone rang, didn't it? Yes. And I answered it? Yes. And what did I say? You said, uh, hello, son, what's the matter? There. You see? Well, you've got another son, Pop. 
Yeah, I, I guess it, it must have been Ricky. Gee, I could have sworn it was you on the phone. Well, no, I was just putting the car away and I got something to eat. Well, not now, uh, you did hear me talk to Mr. Bishop, didn't you, Harriet? Well, yes, I heard you. Who's Mr. Bishop? Well, he, he's the man you told me to call. That, that is, uh, Ricky told me to, to call Helen's parents. That, that's who he's out with, isn't it? Uh, Helen Bishop? No. Her name's Helen, but it's Helen Johnson. Johnson? Holy smokes, I, I called the wrong bishop. Uh, <laughs> the wrong father, Johnson? The, the, uh, the wrong uh, father. Are you sure you weren't dreaming, Pop? You said you were asleep. Uh, Harriet, the phone rang, didn't it? Yes. And I answered it? Yes. Well, then I, I couldn't have been dreaming. <laughs> it must have been Ricky then, Pop. Sometimes he sounds like me over the phone. Well, good night. Good night, Mom. Oh, good night, dear. Oh, uh, good night, Rick. Uh, <laughs> Dave? <laughs> what are you doing? What do you mean, what am I doing? I'm going back to sleep. Well, what about Ricky and Helen Johnson? Well, Mr. Bishop's going to pick them up. Doesn't it seem a little strange to you that Mr. Bishop's going to pick up Ricky and Helen Johnson? Hey, Pop, how come Helen Bishop's father's going to pick up Ricky and Helen Johnson? Because he thinks... See, when you called, I told him... Well, never mind. I'll drive out and explain it to him. Don't stop for any triple banana surprises along the way. <laughs> What'll it be? Say, uh, you look very familiar. Haven't I seen you someplace before? Oh, brother, what'll you have? Black coffee? Oh. <laughs> no, see, I I'm just uh, looking for somebody. Uh, my son and his date. He's about 17, and he looks something like me. Was he dressed like you? Oh. <laughs> no, see, I, I was asleep, and, and he phoned me and woke me up and said his car wouldn't start, and uh, he and his date were waiting here, so I had to rush out here to, to pick them up. Wait a second, there was another man here looking for a couple of kids just a little while ago. There he is now, over in the phone booth. Oh, thank you very much. That's okay. I'm sorry, I haven't finished yet. Uh, uh, Mr. Bishop? Yes. Uh, uh, may I talk to you for a moment, please? I'm Ozzie Nelson. Uh, I'll call you back, dear. Uh, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you like this, but I, I wanted to explain something to you. Oh, what's this all about? I just phoned home, and uh, my daughter's in bed asleep. Well, see, that's what I wanted to tell you. It's not your daughter. It's Helen Johnson. Asleep in my daughter's bed? <laughs> uh, she's the one who was out with Ricky. Who's Ricky? Well, see, he's my son. He's the one who's supposed to be waiting here. See, I, I got this phone call from David, he's my older son, for me to come over here and pick him up that he was here with Helen Bishop. Only, as it turns out, it, it wasn't my older son. He's home. And so is my daughter. At least I thought it was my daughter. Well, uh, yes, it is my daughter. Uh, <laughs> your daughter, uh, who's home in bed, but she's not the daughter who was out with Ricky. See, Ricky was out with another girl named Helen, and he phoned for me to come out here to pick them up. Do I make myself clear? Oh, yes, yes, quite clear. <laughs> Just one thing that puzzled me. Uh, what's that? You said that uh, Ricky phoned you from here, didn't you? Yes, that's right, uh, about a half hour ago. Well, I just spoke to the waitress, and she said there hadn't been any kids in here at all for the last few hours. Well, uh, this is Harry's diner, isn't it? Oh, yes, yes, it is. Are you sure you didn't dream this, Mr. Nelson, this phone call from your son? <laughs> Well, if I did, it was the most realistic dream I've ever had in my life. Well, I wouldn't get upset about it. I've had a couple of dreams that have seemed pretty real, too. Gee, I'm terribly embarrassed about dragging you all the way out here in the no, middle of the night. That's okay. I was feeling kind of hungry anyway. Would you care to join me in a piece of apple pie with a couple of scoops of ice cream on it? Oh, uh... <laughs> Maybe I'll just have a, a glass of water. A uh, cigarette? Uh, no, thank you. Harriet, what are you doing up? I was waiting for you. I couldn't get back to sleep. What happened? Well, it was the darndest thing. I, I went all the way out to Harry's diner, and Mr. Bishop was there, but Ricky wasn't, and neither was Mr. Bishop's daughter. Well, Ricky isn't home, either. Gee, this is ridiculous. Are you sure you didn't dream that phone call? After all, you had two of those banana surprise things. 
You were the one who woke me up and told me you heard the phone ringing. Yes, I thought I heard it ring. Oh, it couldn't possibly have been a dream. <laughs> Before I answer that, do you hear the phone ringing? <laughs> Hello? Well, Rick, where are you? Well, I, I was just out there and you weren't there. Harry's Diner? Oh, for goodness sakes. Well, okay, uh, you just wait there. I I'll, I'll be out there as soon as I can. Okay, son. Well, here we go again. I thought you just told me he wasn't there. Uh, well, uh, just one slight mistake. I went out to Harry's Diner and he's at Larry's Diner. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. Yeah, well, I'll be right back. Big. Bigger. Big as life. Imagine showing pictures of your own youngsters as big as they are and in glorious color. It's easy with Kodak color slides. And today, it's easier to take your own color slides than ever before. Thanks to a brand new simplified Kodak camera, the Pony. The new Pony is simply beautiful to see and beautifully simple to operate. It loads in a jiffy and you're ready to shoot. It makes color slides as easy to take as snapshots. Beautiful color slides, clear, sharp, and lifelike. Of course, you can get fine color enlargements, too. But the most exciting thing of all about the new Pony camera is its price. Just $26.75, or less than $3 down. The new Pony is just one of many outstanding new 35 millimeter cameras by Kodak. You can see them demonstrated this week, wherever you see this sign. Remember, when the camera you choose is made by Kodak, you know it's good. Uh, uh, pardon me, I was looking for my son and his girlfriend. They phoned me from here. Oh, was his name Dickie Nelson? Uh, uh, Ricky, yes. Well, he left about 20 minutes ago. Well, that's strange. He told me he couldn't get his car started. Well, there was a couple of truck drivers in here, and they gave him a push. Are you his father? Oh, uh, yes, I am. Well, Dickie left a message for you. Uh, uh, uh Ricky, uh, what did he say? He said he was going to take the girl home, and he'd see you later. Oh, well, uh, thank you very much. Oh, that's quite all right. How do you do? Howdy. Uh, can I fill her up? Uh, well, uh, a little later, uh, my car is, is down the road a ways. I ran out of gas. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, could I have a, a gallon can of gas? Oh, maybe? certainly. Sure. Oh, uh, just a second. Uh, I, 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 I don't have my wallet with me. Uh, see, uh, my older son phoned me and woke me up. Uh, as it turned out, it wasn't my oldest son at all, it was my younger son. And uh, he was out with a girl named Helen Bishop, and he asked me to call Helen's father. But uh, then uh, he wasn't out with Helen Bishop at all. Uh, actually, he was out with a girl named Helen Johnson. Oh, that's okay, sir. You can drive by tomorrow and pay me. Well, I I'd be very happy to, to give you the complete explanation. Oh, no, that's quite all right. I believe you. Nobody could make up a story like that. <laughs> Wake up. Hey, it's morning. In fact, it's practically afternoon. Afternoon? <laughs> Here, I'll unwind you. <laughs> What'd you let me sleep so late for? Well, you didn't sleep much last night. That's for sure. Well, I sure had a lot of activity. Drove all the way out to Harry's Diner and then all the way back home. Then out to Larry's Diner. No wonder I'm tired. I know. It's funny how you can get just as tired dreaming something as you can actually doing it. What do you mean, dreaming it? Well, from what you said, driving all over town last night. Come on, get dressed. Your breakfast's almost ready. Now, no, wait a second. Uh, are you trying to tell me I didn't drive out to Harry's Diner? What are you talking about? <laughs> I guess you must have been dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, I was dreaming. Come on, get dressed. No, 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 wait a minute. You don't remember the telephone ringing about 12.30 last night? It was Dave asked me to pick him up at Harry's Diner. Dave? Oh, well, no, it, it was uh, Ricky, as it turned out. You mean you dreamt both of them were out there? <laughs> no, when I answered the phone, I must have been a little sleepy, and I thought it was Dave. So I called Mr. Bishop. Who? Mr. Bishop. Who's he? The, the man who smoked all those cigarettes? Well, it, it doesn't matter. He's the wrong man. Anyway, I drove out to Harry's Diner, but they weren't there. So I came home, and that's when I got the second phone call. You got another phone call? <laughs> you know I did. That's when I found out it wasn't Dave, it was Dickie. Uh, Ricky, the, the, uh, <laughs> the girl out there kept calling him uh, Dickie. What girl? The girl at Larry's Diner. I thought it was Harry's diner. So did I. That's why I went there in the first place when I thought it was Dave. But it was Dickie? Yes. No, uh, uh, Ricky. <laughs> why don't you stay in bed, dear? I'll bring you breakfast up here. <laughs> Wait a minute. Harriet, I tell you, I drove out to Dickie's diner to pick up Ricky. What do I do now, Pop? <laughs> Rick, will you please go downstairs and tell your mother what happened last night? What do you mean? Well, I mean, uh, about your phoning me to come out to Larry's diner to pick you up. What's this? <laughs> well, uh, didn't you go out on a date last night? Well, yeah, sort of. W with a girl named Helen Johnson. Well, who's she? <laughs> you mean you and Helen Johnson weren't out at Larry's diner last night? Oh, I was over at the Darby's watching television. Well, uh, and your car didn't break down? I didn't take my car, Pop. It's just across the street. Well, this is ridiculous. You sure you didn't dream all this? Okay, I, I, I was dreaming. Come on, dear, your breakfast is getting cold. Oh, now, Harriet, if you don't mind, I don't think I'll have any breakfast. There's something I, I just got to find out. Oh, all right. Oh, thank goodness there is a gas station here. <laughs> Sure is, mister. Been here for the last ten years. Oh, well, I owe you a little money. The man who was on last night was kind enough to trust me for some gasoline. Last night? Well, that is about 1.30 this morning. Oh, couldn't have been here. We closed up at 8 o'clock last night. Must have been some other gas station. <laughs> no, I'm sure it was this gas station. Well, Larry's Diner is about four miles down the road, isn't it? Larry's Diner? Oh, yes, Larry's Diner. I remember that. It burned down about two years ago. Oh, did you accomplish your mission? Yeah, I guess so. Say, Pop, I've been thinking it over. And if it makes you feel any better, I did call you from Larry's diner last night. Oh, well, thanks a lot for trying to ease my mind, but Larry's diner burned down two years ago. Oh, so that's what you went out to find out about. Well, yeah, I, Harry, I, I, I just had to. Then it was all a dream after all, huh? Well, uh, evidently, but gosh, it was the most realistic dream I've ever had in my life. <laughs> it started out with me on, on the South Sea Island. There were a bunch of dancing girls. Oh, now, all... wait a minute. This is the first time you've mentioned dancing girls. <laughs> That's the part that I'm sure must have been a dream. But anyway, this beautiful blonde was feeding me a, a triple banana surprise. Oh, well, there's your answer. That's the key to the situation right there. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. And all of a sudden, uh, I heard the phone ring. Oh, would you answer the phone, Rick? That's the door, Pop. I'll get it. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, anyway, the, the phone rang and woke me up. You mean you dreamed it woke you up? I, I guess so, but it was so vivid. See, I thought it was Dave, but it was Ricky. And he said he couldn't get his car started, and he asked me to call Helen Spokes. So I called Mr. Bishop. Well, who is this Mr. Bishop you keep talking about? Well, you know, he's the man who, who smokes all the cigarettes. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I guess it's just a, a name I, I made up in my dream. But, gee, it, it's so strange. I can see his face right now. And he looks so darn familiar. Who was it, Rick? A girl. Well, what did she want? She returned your wallet. My wallet? Where did she get it? She said you left it on the counter last night. <laughs> what did she look like? She's a real good-looking blonde. Pardon me. Hey! Hey! Who was it? Well, it was the girl from the diner. 
I thought the diner burned down. No, 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 not Larry's, the Harry's. <laughs> Why didn't you go out to this Harry's diner? Well, I've been looking all over for it all day, and I can't find it. You mean there isn't any such place? Well, if there is, as I say, I can't find it. There's none listed in the phone book. What do you make of it, Doc? It's a real puzzler. <laughs> well, I mean, did it happen or, or didn't it happen? Gee, I don't know, Oz. Do you have any possible explanation for it? You say you ate two of these things before you went to bed? Yeah. Well, I think you were lucky to get off with just a little nightmare. <laughs> well, suppose it was a nightmare. Uh, how do you explain the blonde who came to the house this afternoon to return my wallet? Oh, well, you probably saw her someplace else. Well, well yes, but where? Well, I don't know. Will there be anything else, gentlemen? Uh, no, thank, no, thank you. you. Hey, oh, the <laughs> miss! This is the girl from Harry's Diner. Uh, weren't you working at Harry's Diner last night? No, I just started working here last night. Weren't you the gentleman that left his wallet on the counter? Oh, well, it was this counter. <laughs> I found your address in it, so I dropped it off at your house this afternoon on my way to work. Didn't you get it? Oh, well, yes, uh, thank you very much. That's okay. Well, there's your answer. How about that? I must have dreamt the whole darn thing. Where's your ice cream, Mr. Nelson? Oh, uh, thank you very much. Well, I'm glad I cleared that up for you, Oz. Thank you. You? Yeah. The least you can do is pay for my triple banana surprise. Well, uh, I will if you'll clear up one last puzzle. What's that? Who is Mr. Bishop? Mr. Bishop? Yes, you know, the man I met at Harry's Diner, the guy who smoked all the cigarettes. Oh. Well, I guess I'll have to pay for this myself. Get a good night's sleep, Oz. <laughs> You're a big help. Where do I know this Mr. Bishop from? His face is so darn familiar. You probably saw him someplace else, too. Yes, but where? Well, thanks a lot. Good night, Doc. Right on. Tonight, we've asked Harriet to tell us something about her own personal movie camera. Yes, it's called the Kodak Medallion 8. I like it because it's easy to carry, it's very good looking, and it's easy to use. Now, I'm no expert, but watch. To load it, you drop in the film and click it shut. See? And it makes wonderful movies. We've taken lots of movies of David and Ricky over the years. It's a movie record of our family, and it's one of the nicest things we own. Right now, with the holiday season coming up... Uh, pardon me, Harriet. Uh, men, buy your wife a medallion aid of her own. It's ideal to borrow for fishing, camping, football... Well, in between, I enjoy my medallion very much. I think you will, too. See the Medallion 8 movie camera at your Kodak dealers. It's only $11 down. And also see the three-lens medallion turret model. They're made by Kodak, so you know they're good. Ozzie and Harriet are brought to you on film by Eastman Kodak Company, who remind you that the name Kodak on your camera or film is your guarantee of quality. If it's made by Kodak, you know it's good. This has been an ABC Television Network film presentation. <laughs>